This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to create this paper scroll icon using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is set the view to custom and then we're going to zoom in at 100% and then we'll open up our align and distribute menu with this button up top and we want to have last selected chosen from this drop down and then we'll open up our edit objects colors gradients and stroke menu so the first thing we're going to do is create a rectangle so let's grab the squares and rectangles tool and we'll create a rectangle about that shape and size I'm gonna take the opacity of this and bring this down about in half and I'm going to turn this red and then we'll grab the bezier pen you can click on the tool or just press B on the keyboard and I'm going to start this up here outside of this rectangle and click and then hold control and move that line straight through the rectangle until it goes to the outside of the right half the right side and then click and then we can let go of control and just press enter and there we have our little line so what we're going to do next is go to the edit paths by nodes tool and we're going to take this line about right here and just click and drag this down a little bit to give this a bit of a dip then we'll click on this node up here and grab this little handle and bring this one up and curve this upwards and we'll take this one bring this down a little bit we want to have a nice fluid curve that starts out over here it dips down and then peaks back up and then back to the starting point so that's about the shape and the consistency of the line that we want right there that's pretty good uh, we'll go back to the select tool and we're gonna convert that stroke into a path so we'll go to path uh, stroke to path and then I'll right click this and go to duplicate and I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard and grab this duplicated copy and drag it down about this far okay now one thing you want to keep in mind when doing this is that the space between these two lines is going to represent the thickness of the paper scroll so try to keep that in mind when you're spacing these two out so if you bring this all the way down here it's gonna be a really fat uh, sheet of paper I'm keeping it for this tutorial up here right about there so that's pretty good and once you have it positioned how you like it just hold shift and click on the other line so you have them both selected and we'll go to path union and then I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard and click on the red rectangle and go to path difference and then once we've done that we can go to path break apart and that's gonna break that up into three different pieces and let's click off of everything to deselect it and I'm going to take this top piece and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And we'll do the same thing down here. Click on this, press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And the next step is to create a circle. So let's come over to the circles and ellipses tool. And I'm going to hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. We want it to be about that big compared to uh, our little red shape right here. And I'm going to make this um, green for now just so we can differentiate it. And I'm going to go back to the select tool and hold shift and click on the red shape and let's make sure that's aligned on the left edges so let's click on the align left edges button and then click off of it deselect everything and then I'm gonna hold control and click and drag this green object up to about here I'm actually gonna zoom in on this a little bit by holding control and rolling up on the mouse wheel we wanna zoom in a little bit we wanna have this green circle positioned near the border of this red object but overlapping it just a little bit so I'm gonna move this up a little bit more let's say that's pretty good right there and I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to a hundred percent yeah that's pretty good so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click that green circle and go to duplicate and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red shape and go to path difference and then path break apart and then hold shift and click on this red shape so it declicks it and we just have this little corner piece selected right here and with that corner piece selected we're just gonna press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that so that's why we did that we wanted to get rid of that little corner piece right there and what I'll do now is I'll click on this green circle since we've punched a hole in that right there we want to fill that back in so I'm gonna right click that and go to duplicate and hold shift click on the uh, the red shape and go to path union so that should be filled back in now so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this green circle and hold control and grab this bottom right arrow 
and scale this down about that much. You want it to be about that much smaller. And then I'm gonna take this green circle, I'm gonna right click it and go to duplicate and put this over here because we're gonna work with that in a few minutes. So with this green circle, I'm gonna right click that and duplicate that again. And then hold control and click and drag this straight up to about there above the red shape. And what I'll do is I'm going to grab the Bezier pen again. You can just press B on the keyboard to grab it. And I'm going to turn on the snap to paths. And I'm going to snap the cursor onto the far left hand side of this circle and click. And then hold control and bring this line down until it snaps onto the left side of that other circle. And then click. And then holding control the whole time still, I'm going to bring this line straight across to the right edge and click. Still holding control, bring it straight up until it snaps. Click. Then we can let go of control and bring the line back to the starting point. And then we can turn off our snap to paths. And we'll go back to our select tool. And I'm going to hold shift and click on the green circle so we have them both selected. And go to path union. And we'll turn that blue for now just so we can differentiate it from the rest of the graphic. And then I'll click on this green circle. And I'll right click it and go to duplicate. And hold shift and click on the blue shape and go to path difference and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool the squares and rectangles tool and I'm just gonna click and drag to create a rectangle going over about half of this green circle so if you look at here uh, you can see the uh, blue the blue side and the green side so it doesn't have to be exactly halfway through but just try to eyeball it and get a rough estimate um, we got the blue slash green half of the circle on the left and the green side on the right. So that's how you want to have it set up. And once you have it set up like that, we can just hold shift and click on that green circle and go to path difference. And you can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. And we're going to take this green circle, this other copy, and I'm going to hold shift and click on the red shape over here and align the right edges, align right sides. And then click off of that to deselect everything. And then I'm going to take just this green circle and hold control and click and drag this up to about here. Right until it's about touching the edge of the red shape right there. Maybe a little lower actually. Yeah, we'll go a little lower. We want to have a little bit of space in there. That's pretty good. And then I'm going to take this top arrow and I'm just going to bring this down about that much. We want this green we want this green shape out of the red area. So we're going to do that by taking this and bringing that down like that. And then what we'll do next is let's turn on the snap to cusp nodes and the snap to paths. And we'll go back to our Bezier pen, which press B on the keyboard and snap the cursor onto the corner of this, this red object right here and click, hold control, bring this line straight down until it snaps onto the right edge of the green uh, ellipse and click. Still holding control, bring this line straight across until it snaps and click. And then still holding control, bring this line straight up and then click. And then we can let go of control and just finish this line up going inside of the red shape and connecting back to the starting point. And then we can turn off the snap to cusp nodes and the snap to paths. And we can go to our select tool and we'll turn this blue We'll get rid of that black outline by holding the shift key and clicking on the X. And we'll take the opacity of that and drop that down a little bit as well. And I'm going to send that to the bottom with this button up top that says lower selection to the bottom. And then I'm going to click on this red shape and then right click it and go to duplicate. And then hold shift and click on the blue shape we just created and go to path difference. So that got rid of that extra area that was in there. That was why we did that. So. What we'll do now is we'll take this green object, this green oval, we'll right click that, go to duplicate, and then hold shift and click on the blue object and go to path union. So what we did was we gave that, we filled that in with the rest of the oval shape. So that's why we did that. And then finally, what we could do is let's click on this blue object and we'll right click that and go to duplicate. And let's just turn that black for now and let's lower that one step so it goes beneath the green circle and then hold shift and click on that green circle or oval and go to path difference. So we end up with this little shape right here. 
And then again, we'll go back to our rectangle tool. I'm gonna click and drag and create a rectangle going over about half of that, maybe a little more than half over this black shape right here. Go back to the select tool, hold shift, click on that shape and go to path difference. And then we can press one on the keyboard to zoom out. And I'm gonna click on this blue shape right here and then right click that and go to duplicate and hold shift and click on that red shape and go to path difference. So we now have the base, uh, we now have the foundation of what we have, what we're gonna create. So let's click and drag over this entire graphic and let's give this a black outline by holding shift and clicking on the color black. And then we'll get rid of the fill by clicking the X. Just click that X, that'll get rid of the fill color. And as you'll see, we have an outline here, but the lines aren't consistent. These lines are a little thinner. So we're gonna fix that by going to the Stroke Style tab. And from this drop down, it, it defaults to percentage, but we're gonna click that and go to Pixels, PX. And we're just gonna change that, erase that, whatever number that is in there. I'm just gonna write in four and see how that looks. Maybe I'll go a little thicker than that. Let's try six. All right, that's pretty good. So with six, we'll go to Path, Stroke to Path, and then Path, Union. And then we could take the opacity of this and bring this all the way up, and we now have the shape. So um, what we'll do next is we're gonna put some like makeshift shadowing in here. So in order to do that, I'm going to right click this and go to Duplicate so we have another copy of it. And I'm gonna grab the Rectangle tool, and I'm just gonna create a rectangle going over the top, the top of that little dome right there. And let me turn this red and hold shift and click on the X to get rid of the black outline. And we'll bring the opacity down about in half so we can see what we're doing. And I'm gonna zoom in over this portion right here by holding control and rolling up on the mouse wheel. And we'll take the arrow. We wanna grab this little intersection between the red uh, rectangle and the, the black dome right there. So uh, I'll bring this down a little bit actually. And once, I've, once I have it positioned like this, I'll hold shift and click on that object and go to path intersection. And then I'm gonna hold control and click and drag this down to about here. And while holding the control key and the left click mouse, I'm gonna press the space bar and that's gonna create a copy. And we could drag this copy down here, press the space bar again to create another copy, bring this down, press the space bar. Remember we're holding the control key and the left click on the mouse the entire time we're doing this. And press the space bar again and for this final copy, I'll just leave that there and let go of everything. And then I'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on the rest of those other shapes. So we have those, we have them all selected, those little objects that we just created. And we're gonna make sure that they are spaced out evenly by coming to the distribute panel and clicking on make vertical gaps between objects equal. And then we'll go to path union to unify them all together like that. And I'm just gonna position this so that it looks like it's all evenly spaced. Maybe uh, I'm looking at the space here and the space here and I wanna make sure that they're, they look somewhat even. All right, that's pretty good like that. I'm gonna press one on the keyboard to zoom out. And then I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool again and I'm gonna create a rectangle going over, going through the center of those shapes we just created. Let me go back to the select tool and I'm just gonna make this about that wide, maybe a little wider. And let me zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna hold control and roll up the mouse wheel, hold shift and click on those little lines we just created and make sure that that rectangle is centered by clicking on the center on the vertical axis button and then go to path difference. Then I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out and I'm gonna hold shift and click on the uh, our little scroll graphic right here and unify that together by going to path union. And as you can see, we've created some little, like, uh, like a little makeshift shadowing there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side right here. So let's right click this and go to duplicate. And let's zoom in over this top right corner over here. You could, pro you could just hold control and, and roll up on the mouse wheel. And I'm gonna turn on the snap to cusp nodes and I'm gonna grab the bezier pen by pressing B on the keyboard. And I'm gonna snap the cursor onto this little corner right here and then click and hold control and bring that line straight up and then click and bring this line over here and click and hold control and bring it straight down through there and then click. 
and we can let go of control and connect this back to the starting point. And we can turn off our snap to cusp nodes. We'll go to the select tool. We'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on our scroll graphic and go to path intersection. And then I'm gonna hold control and click and drag this down about this far. And let me zoom out a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. The idea is you wanna have these about the same space apart. You wanna have these lines about the same spacing as these lines are. So I'm just gonna hold control and click and drag this up and down, pressing the space bar to make a copy each time. I'm gonna go ahead and make a few copies of this. Put that right there. I'm gonna click and drag over all of those little shapes that we just created and make sure that they are spaced out evenly with the make vertical gaps between objects equal button and then unify them together by going to path union. And I'll just move this up a little bit. Make sure you're holding control when you're moving them up and down, otherwise they won't go straight up and down. They'll kind of go off the axis a little bit. That's why I like to hold control when I'm clicking and dragging things. It keeps it either, it keeps it on the same vertical axis or the same horizontal axis either way. So that's uh, important to understand. And then let me press one to zoom back out. And we could just click and drag over the whole thing and go to path union and we now have our scroll icon so if we want to color this thing in now you want to give it some color what we could do is let's bring the opacity down about in half and we'll go to path break apart and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything and then I'm just gonna shift click on all of these little pieces inside of the shape so we have all of these little pieces right here selected all at once. And I'm gonna bring the opacity up and I'm gonna color this in with like a very light shade of um, like a very light khaki tan shade like that. And uh, let me click off of that to deselect. I'm gonna take this piece and then hold shift and take this piece, make them a little darker. Maybe I'll go to the next shade up. And then I'll click this black piece in the background. I may have to zoom in to grab that. There we go. And we'll bring the opacity of that all the way up and I'll make that a darker brown, maybe like that. I'll go with that shade right there. Now you pretty much have it. You can click and drag over the whole thing to group it together. And there you have our little vector paper scroll icon. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.